All right, let's get right to it. You have a security team. You need communications. You're on a budget. You come to the right place. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I have an awesome solution that you can start using immediately and it's free. Thanks for coming to Max Outdoors. Let's get into this. Just got these in the mail. This is 10 individual RB37 by Rectivus. What they are is two-way handheld radios. So what I'm going to do is test these out. We're going to take a look and see how they perform. Um, I could really find zero reviews on this particular model. It's a brand new model. So I thought uh, I really liked the way it looked on paper. So I thought I would test them out for you and uh, let you know if it's worth buying. So I do like the Retivas model. I've had experience with those uh, prior and uh, different models and uh, they performed very well for a very low cost. So if you're looking for a budget two-way radio, this might be great. Could be for you know families, but what we're looking for is church security teams. Um, a lot of people are starting to take their church security very serious and doing so. Communications is one of the most valuable assets that you have as a team. So we're gonna take a look at this. The thing that caught my eye about the Retiva's RB37 model, besides being brand new, is it has a feature that I've never seen on these before. And that's a Bluetooth headset. Comes in the package with the radio and the Bluetooth headset, um, which I think is great. At least I think it's gonna be great. That's why we wanna test it out to make sure and to verify that. But we've all used the Motorola's in the past, which is great radio. Um, and they have the wires that you have to route through your jacket, up through your clothes to get to your ear. And quite frankly, it's just kind of a nuisance. So if we can eliminate that nuisance, I'm all for it. So we're going to take a look at this particular model as well as another model um, from Retivas, as well as another model from Motorola. And we're going to see what we think is best for small group security, small families, church security, uh, different teams like that. So if you're interested in that, stick around and uh, we'll see how they perform. to post a video and then I got an exciting update it's in the palm of my hand make sure you stick around at the end of the video and I'll show you exactly what it is all right so affordable communications we looked at three different units and that's two from Retivas we have the RB37 which is this one right here we also looked at the Retivas RT22 and also the Motorola talk about T800 this was the one I decided to go ahead and order 10 of um, to help a church security team get going. And uh, we'll go through this one and I'll show you what uh, we've ran into with this and show you what we think about it. So let's take a look and we'll start uh, with what you get in the box. All right, so you open it up. Here's your manual. Manual is not the best. Um, you can tell these are from China. It's just a little bit of communications barrier, but they're really pretty simple. And I'll help you go through that. So here's your handheld unit with your battery. Battery snaps on. You can also add the belt clip to it just with the screws. Screw that on. You have a little hand lanyard. We really didn't use that. Here's your charging it charges with the USB-C which is the latest and greatest and that can be charged through the docking station then you can either plug it into a power source or just plug it into 110 um, you could have those charging in an office or however you want to handle that or individuals could charge them just straight to the uh, USB if you're driving in your car or anything that way plug it in right there 
So here's the thing that makes the RV37 unique. That's a Bluetooth headset. All right, get that out of the package. First thing you'll want to do is go ahead and pair that with the radio. Um, basically what you're going to do is flip that on. You'll see a blue light come on. And then you're going to turn your radio on. Just twist the dial. 17. It gets louder as you turn. That's the volume control. And as you heard, it was on channel 17. But uh, you can adjust the channels. 16, 15, 14. Has 22 different options. 15, 16, 17. We ended up running, testing these out on channel 17 seemed to work the best for us. And you're going to have to try your local area and see if there's any interference. Um, sometimes you'll run into interference, especially in like a church security team, maybe the electronics from the sound booth and the sound system uh, may interfere with certain channels more than others. But once you have this turned on, again, we'll just flip this on right here. You'll see the blue light come on. Once this is turned on, 17. to pair it, you can hold this top button. That's the channel changer, but also if you just hold it, it'll kick into pairing mode. Hold it for about two, three seconds. Once it starts to pair, now it may take just a minute to pair up, just like any Bluetooth. But once you have it paired, then you'll no longer hear through the radio, you'll hear it through the Bluetooth headset. So, that's one way to test it, is you can just hit your up and down arrow buttons and you're only gonna hear it through the headset. Now the headset comes with, like most of them, a few different options for different size ears. Um, you can kind of play around with that and see. Um, with the small security team we just tested these on, uh, about half like the Bluetooth headset, um, half had to get used to it a little bit you can move these around. So this is set up for left ear. Just put that over your ear. Here's your mic. Um, and if you want to go to the right ear, what you do, let me see if I can figure this out here again. So basically you twist that around. Don't feel like you're going to break it or anything. That's how it's made. So now you can go with the right ear. So whichever you prefer. Um, it's a little big, admittedly, but uh, I think it's comfortable. Um, they work good. Um, I'll warn you about a couple things. Um, we had an incident with uh, the first church there that we uh, tested these at. And if you go in the congregation, if you're sitting in the service, um, that's fine if it's coming through Bluetooth. But one of the guys either shut it off or somehow it got disconnected. And then uh, one of the other guys had an open mic and it started coming through. Um, in the middle of the service, which is 14, not good. So be careful with that. 15, 16, 17. So I think these are great if you're in uh, the parking lot or out in the hallways, uh, maybe walk in the halls as a security team. But in the service, you got to be real careful um, not to disconnect this. You don't want to be that guy. So a um, couple options. Number one, don't disconnect it. But uh, number two, you can use um, your typical um, headset for like uh, a two pin set that come with my UV5R. I make a lot of accessories and headsets for this because it's a very popular ham radio. And the same two pin setup works with this Retivis RB37. So you can see the same two pin headset there. So, I tried the one that came with the Baofeng and it's fine and a lot of the guys like that. But I went ahead and ordered one on Amazon. Um, and this one was, I think it was just over $12, $12.99 I believe. And again, I'll put a link in the description so you could take a look at that. And if you order 10, I think you can get them for, I don't know, 40, 50 bucks. Again, link in the description. So this is the Klycon two pin. Um, and the nice thing about that is it not only works in the Ham radio, plugs right in, and again, with the Retivis, if you don't want to use the Bluetooth, maybe people that are in the service, this is a little more secure, you're not going to lose connection, and uh, 
you know, you can just plug that right in. That way it's never going to broadcast over the radio. You'll always hear it in your, in your earpiece. If I push the orange push to talk button, I'll be talking through this mic. Another thing that you got to be careful of is if you push this into your ear, there's a button right there that will change the language and you'll be speaking Chinese. So if that happens, usually when people are pushing that into their ear, there's a little button right there. Just push it again and you'll be okay. There's another little button here and that's where you can have an open mic. If you just tap that, everything that I'm saying is being broadcast to all the radios. So I got to push that again turn that off. So be careful with that. And again, it's just a matter of training like anything. You got to train with it. You got to know how it works. You got to know how it operates. But if you want to be safe, you can put that aside or only use those outside or in the hallways. But if you're going in the service, you can use this setup and you're not going to get yourself in trouble. So this is your earpiece. And the earpiece, there's a plastic tube. Many of you have probably used these before. Um, if you're law enforcement or maybe military, but uh, now you want to cut those and make sure you get the proper fit, but this just goes over your ear and it's a little more covert, a little more inconspicuous. Um, so you can kind of hide it a little bit more. Um, but uh, and you can clip this on the back of your collar or something that way, kind of route it up through your suit coat or shirt, whatever you're wearing, um, which quite frankly, that's why I like the Bluetooth because it's quicker setup you're going. Um, and I think there's a purpose and a time for that. But if you want to be a little bit more inconspicuous, go ahead and use this. Works very well. So push to talk there. If you're not using the headset, just like any walkie talkie, you're going to push this orange button and you'll use that to talk. And I think you're never going to satisfy everybody with one solution. So I think if you have choices, um, if you want to let the guys get their own headset so they can be happy with that, um, just maybe offer some different options. I'll put some links in the descriptions of different choices, but I'm sure they can find a solution that they, they really like. One of the more popular ham radios for size comparison, you can see this is a Baofang UV5R. Now this is a ham radio. And again, this is on the FRS frequency. And not to get too deep into the weeds with that, but you have the FRS radios, which the nice thing about these, no license required. You don't have to do anything, turn them on, start using them immediately. You could step up to a little bit higher wattage, higher range frequency, which is the GMRS. But again, there you have to uh, get a license from the FCC. And then you can step up to something like this, which is a ham radio, which is gonna give you much greater range. You can use repeaters, you can do a lot of different things, but there's licensing with the FCC, plus you have to pass a test on this one. And then of course you can get into satellite radios and everything else, so it can get pretty complicated. It's illegal and you can get in trouble if you transmit on these without a license. So for church security teams, unless you wanna go through all that, um, I think the FRS frequency is probably the best and with that again you can just pull it right out of the box and start using it so very simple solution very affordable let me give you an idea and i'll put a link in the description um, you can get these on amazon and i'll put a link um, for the small security team that uh, we just set up that was about six people um, on that team but we went ahead and ordered 10 units and we went ahead and got 10 of them because we thought it'd be nice to always have them charged up um, we also decided to put these in the nursery so the ladies in the nursery can use that if they need to reach the security team they have access to that now there is an alarm on this that they could push but one thing that you got to be careful of again is if someone is in the service you probably don't want the alarm going off and alarming everyone in the service so up to you you can use the alarm as long as everyone has their headset um, that would be fine so Coming out of the box, these are very simple to use. Um, again, when you turn them, when you first flip it on, if you're gonna pair that, push that button for two seconds after you've turned this, this one on. Turn that on, hold that for two seconds, that'll pair it. If you're just going to plug it in, or just you can just use it as a radio, if you don't mind uh, you know, coming, the sound coming over 
the radio. If you're outside or something, you can just use it as a handheld radio. Um, but what you'll do is you'll want to try whether you're using this in a small business, if you're using this as a church security team or maybe neighbor, neighborhood watch team, um, something that's going to be local. Um, I don't know what they tout on these radios for how many miles they're effective. Um, that's always by line of sight, so you got to be careful with that. Um, any obstructions is really going to cut the, the uh, range down. However, what we were getting with this in your typical setting here in the Midwest, we were getting about a mile range, which should be plenty for any church. Um, but uh, again, test that and you'll want to try um, do some testing before with the different channels. 16. Um, 15, 14. Do some radio checks on that. Make sure that you're not getting feedback. There may be a local business that has something that interferes with that, or again, a, a, a sound system um, in the church or in your business. Um, just make sure that there's no, and you can change back and forth with the channels on that. So uh, pretty easy to use. So there are some programming options that you can do. If you want to program these all the same, um, there's a couple different functions. Um, one, if you hold this, it pairs the Bluetooth. This one, if you hold the bottom one, gives you a little flashlight, which I wasn't super excited about. I always carry a flashlight and things that way, but I actually have found myself using this more than I thought just because it's so convenient. So, um, you know, it's not a super bright flashlight, but helping you find something in the dark, it's not a bad option. So, but you can program that key to do something different. If you want to make that the alarm, you go on, you just, uh, you have to have the cable and you'll get a cable. I'll put a link in the description. You can get a cable to hook that up to your computer and then you can start doing some programming and things that way. Now, since these are Bluetooth, I can program this one to where I'm going to change the flashlight to the alarm. So now when I hold this, it's going to be the alarm not the flashlight. And then I can line all the different ones up. I can line all 10 of them up here and I can just share that setting. However, I set these up and it'll pair with all of them to where they all have the same settings. Whether you're changing frequencies or doing something different uh, with the hard buttons to make it like say the alarm or flashlight or there, like say several different things you can, you can do. And the manual does carry uh, you know, some decent instructions on that. But uh, what we found is uh, they're actually quite simple and very useful. So uh, I know the security team that we just implemented uh, these radios with was happy to get them. Again, some learning curves, uh, making sure that you don't tap this button and have an open mic and uh, everybody can hear what you're saying or tap this one and start speaking uh, Chinese. So, but other than that, uh, your volume up and down here, your volume here, so pretty basic settings. That's the beauty of this. For uh, 10 of these, I think we paid $399. Again, I'll put the link in the description and you can go on Amazon and, and buy those. You can get uh, a package of two. I think they run somewhere around $40 um, regardless how many you buy. I think it's a little cheaper when you buy when you buy more. But I'd always suggest getting more than what you need. Um, so that way if the church staff or um, maybe they want to use them for something or you just have extras being charged up, if you want to put some in the nurseries, if you have two or three nurseries, you can put one in there. And uh, the ladies in the nursery really seem to appreciate these just because it gives them more security. A lot of times if it's a big church, you're walking around, you may have one or two people walk in security and uh, they're not going to be camping out right there at the nurseries if you have a good sized church. So this does give a level of communication and a level of security to the nursery workers. And you can use these, again, however you'd like to use them, but that's just typical church environment. That's how they're going to use those. A um, couple other options we talked about. Um, we tested the Motorola Talk About T800. And neat little walkie-talkie radio, two-way communication device, has a lot of the same kind of features that the flashlights and, you know, it's all the FRS are going to work similar. Um, but the thing about the Motorola Talk About is they have a Bluetooth option um, to where you can actually pair it with your phone and say the grid goes down. We have uh, storms in Florida right now with the hurricanes and, uh, you know, you always lose 
cell phone service. When any uh, emergency natural disaster happens, um, the nice thing about the Motorola talk about the T800 is that you can use those uh, to send text messages even if your cell phone service is down. It uses the uh, handheld unit, the T800, as like a modem so you can uh, send text and share locations and com have communication even in a grid down situation, which is nice. Again, these are only going to work about a mile range. Um, the Motorola's will work about the same. The Retivas RT22 uh, will work. All of them are going to be, you know, it'll, it'll vary a little bit depending on the geography and, and the layout of, of your area. If you have a nice line of sight uh, with no obstructions, you may get two, three, four, five miles out of it. But most of the times with buildings and trees and, and things like that, you're only going to get about a, about a mile, which is, again, perfect for most church applications or small business applications. So a couple different options that really, really work nice. So a um, couple of the things we can look at is the uh, Retivas RT22, same company, a little smaller. Um, if you like a real small and thin um, handheld unit, um, easy to slip into a, a jacket pocket or a pants pocket, um, or put it on, again, a belt clip or something that way, but very small. These aren't big by any means. Again, for a point of reference, those of you who have a uh, Baofeng UV5R, um, that's the base unit there without the extended battery. And you can see the antenna is going to be a little longer, but the unit itself is about the same thickness. The Retivas is just a little bit taller. Um, so um, give you a size comparison. So if you're looking for something small, I definitely recommend the RT22. By the way, while we're talking about that, I could add some RT22s and they will still communicate just fine with these. So you could have a mix of the uh, RB37s and the RT22s. So they both work on the same frequencies. So you could mix and match those. And the RT22 is just a little bit cheaper. Again, I'll put a link in the description so you can check those out as well. So that's the basics of this. Again, whatever you do, um, if you have a security team, communications is one of the most valuable resources that you have in an emergency. Um, and it's not just, uh, you know, the active shooter or, God forbid, something like that, but uh, just in any emergency situation. It could be health emergencies. It could be, you know, a fire. Or it could be, um, you know, power outage or, or something like that. So just, again... If you're organizing a church security team, really take a look at your resources. Most churches are going to have some former military guys or current military guys. They may have some law enforcement officers or former law enforcement officers. They may have some uh, uh, just uh, citizens that are uh, very in, in tune, a good situational awareness, and they have a desire to serve. Utilize all those. Um, you'll have people that are more techie with the gear, and, and you'll have some that are really good with uh, the firearms. And, you know, I, I just encourage you, no matter what you get, whether it's technology, whether it's, uh, you know, self-defense weapons, um, as a team, train together. The more you train together, um, the more you're going to come together and have confidence that, uh, God forbid, there's ever an emergency that, that you're going to handle it right. We've seen several examples of that um, just from uh, people paying attention um, in, a, in a crazy world and being able to react. Um, we've seen the church, um, uh, church shootings, and some of the responses were just incredible. Um, here in, in our area, um, just a month or so ago, we had uh, one of our security team mem members is a law enforcement officer, and he got called out to go to the Greenwood Park Mall where there was a, a, a active shooter. There's a mass shooter that had uh, shot and killed a couple people. But you've probably heard a uh, young gentleman, Eli Dickin, pulled out his personal uh, handgun, his concealed carry, and um, actually went against uh, the mall rules, which hopefully they'll rethink those things, but, uh, and stopped the threat. Everyone knows it was, it was amazing, um, and he had trained. Obviously, he had trained because he put eight out of ten rounds you know, into the suspect and, and stop the threat and save countless lives. So again, whatever you do is you're putting a security team together, just get together, train, uh, 
utilize the technology, whether it's cameras, whether it's two-way communications, you know, understand what to do in a fire. You know, where, where do you have a defibrillator if someone has a heart attack? Do you have, have medical kits and people that are trained how to use them? Most churches have nurses, but uh, are they part of that team? And just uh, really, I challenge you to just, uh, you know, come together and, and understand uh, the talents and the gifts that the people on the team have and know how to utilize those. So um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment. Um, and again, one thing I told you I would do if you stuck around to the end of the video, and that is give you a viable solution that is um, free. So if you go to um, the App Store, whether you have Android or iPhone, and type in Zello, um, search for the app Zello. Zello is a two-way communications app. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I have used it on executive protection details where uh, we didn't want to burn the Motorola batteries. We could save that till you know, we really need those. We will look at uh, using this Zello app. Um, and the beauty about Zello app, you can download that right now and start using it. We used it uh, in several churches when they didn't have any other resources. Um, you can download that app and um, has a really nice interface, very simple. You just add your contacts. So the nice thing is, um, you know, if, if you're walking the halls and you see something in the parking lot, you can immediately contact your full security team if you add those in as contacts. Um, just push this button and uh, it will contact everybody. You can say, you know, I need help um, in the parking lot, north parking lot, um, or whatever the case is. And again, most churches will have a, you know, a code word um, that is uh, all hands on deck. This is, uh, you know, like active shooter or something very serious is about to happen. And we need everybody um, coming, to, coming to help. So um, anyway, that is a great app. Um, I would say download that now, try it out. It works fine. Um, and again, if you're in the services, you can just have your typical AirPods or Bluetooth headset and you can use that and it's very effective. All right, so thanks for sticking around to the end. Here's the update. Um, right as I was getting ready to post this video, Rativa sent in uh, a couple new radios, the RB37. And the change was it went from this Bluetooth headset, which got mixed reviews, um, to this one, which is much smaller, uh, lighter, and uh, a lot of the guys like it. Um, but I'll tell you this, the honest truth, um, it's a little bit of a hassle sometimes with some radios. I can't figure out why. Some of them pair up right away. Some of them you got to work with a little bit. So here's what I've experienced out of all the team we've been testing these with. Just about all of them have went to uh, trade these in for, I have a couple different wired headsets. I know it's a nuisance to route around a little bit, but the one that most people have decided on um, is the BT. And I will, uh, I think it's called the BTEC. Uh, we call it the BT, but the BTEC um, seems to be the one most popular with, with everyone. And the reason being, um, it just stays put. It stays put and this one goes, you clip it on the back of your collar. It goes over your ear. You want to trim that and make sure you get the good fit. And then once you get the feel for that, it slides right into your ear and pretty much you can't even see it and it, it stays put. The worry about these, they're great. Um, and even these are okay. But what our concern is, if you, um, are called on to get into action, go hands-on. We're worried about these running or getting into it. You're gonna you're gonna lose that. So, um, you know, and it's a little bit tougher to fumble with. Um, not bad. Definite improvement from this. So, and I'll put the link when you order the BT37. We'll make sure you get these. And then also I'll put the link in for the BTEC um, two wire that plugs into the side and uh, make sure you get these I, out of all of them we've tested um, this by far has been the most popular clip this to your lapel or your shirt that's your mic so you have to talk mic right here uh, compared to the ones i've mentioned prior uh, in the video 
these, um, they're not bad, but it seems like you have to pull it up. The range isn't as good. So with this one, I can leave it here, push the button, and everyone hears me very clearly. The other nice thing I like about this is the fact that it doesn't block off your ear completely. Um, with some of these, you're, you're filling your ear canal with that rubber. You can hear the mic, but you can't hear uh, the ambient noise around you. So um, these you can still hear out of your ear, the right or left, whichever one you put it in. And they do come with a couple of plugs that you can go right or left. Um, but, uh, and then really the only thing you see back here is just the little clear cord, which is pretty covert, not bad. Don't look like you just stepped in from the 90s. And again, this one is definite improvement. I'm not saying anything bad against any of these other than this is the least favorite, next, and then the top favorite has been the B, the B Tech. And I'll put in a, a link in the description. I think you can get 10 of these really cheap, but I'll uh, make sure I put that link in there. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this helped. Leave some comments if you've had uh, experience with different ones, if you've had issues with different radios, if you've had great success with other radios, let us know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching the video. Max out. <laughs>